this is going to be a quick tutorial to get you started streaming on Twitch or YouTube or wherever using Streamlabs desktop platform. Before we get started, make sure you click the link in the description of this video to download Streamlabs desktop and then you can follow along. Once you install Streamlabs desktop using the link in the description, you wanna open it up. The very first thing we're going to do here is come down to the bottom left and open up the settings. And then on the bottom left of the settings tab, we're going to click log in. Here you will see a few different platforms. In this example, we're gonna be using Twitch, which is probably one of the more common platforms you're gonna be streaming to. So you just wanna click the Twitch icon or whichever icon you wanna to stream to, and then log into that platform. Once you log in, you may see a feed show up as I have showing your recent followers and things like that but otherwise we're going to be starting with a very blank canvas first thing i'll mention is sources this is how you add sources to your stream such as your game or your webcam so you, you just want to click the plus here and then you will have a lot of options here first of which you're probably going to want to add is your game capture if you're streaming games you also have the option to use display capture and display capture will capture your entire monitor that you select as opposed to only the game window but there's a lot of options here. You can play around with these and find what you need. Also, if you are using a webcam, it will be listed under the video capture device source. So make sure if you have a webcam you wanna set up, that's the source you're gonna to wanna to use. Once you do link your platform account, if you do go back into the sources and scroll down to widgets, here's where you can add all of your cool things like your alerts, your donation goals, follower goals, all of that type of thing. Once you add your game and webcam sources and whatever other sources you wanna add, we're gonna go ahead and make sure our microphone is set up. So here on the right hand side, you're gonna see this audio mixer tab. Now desktop audio is by default gonna be on. So basically anything, any sound that's coming through your computer, your speakers, or your headset is going to come through desktop audio. So this will include your game, any friends you're talking to on Discord, um, any videos you're watching or music you're playing in the background, it will all come through this one track. So to set up the mic, we're just gonna click this little settings wheel down by the mic, and then we're gonna click properties, and then it'll bring up this menu. So here under device, I don't know what that weird number is, but we're going to find whatever your microphone is. So this might be your headset microphone or your USB mic. In my case, I have a Scarlett Solo, so I'm gonna select this one, and that is my microphone. You can also test the audio here and do some other things, but those are a little more complicated, and really selecting the device is all you should really have to do here. Then you can just exit out. As you can see on the bottom right now, my microphone is picking up just fine. I do have videos on some microphone filters. If you do wanna increase your microphone quality on stream, I'll link that in the description as well if you wanna check that video out. Before we get into the more advanced settings when it comes to streaming, you just wanna run a speed test here and see what your upload speed Speed is the download is not as important but you want to make sure your upload is ideally at least a 10 or higher um, ideally higher you want more like a 20 to 30 to be really safe and have a lot of room um, to stream at a good quality with the settings I'm about to show you so make sure you run a speed test and make sure you know what your upload speed is before you go into this I'm gonna put a chart up on the screen right now that is twitch's recommended um, bitrate for streaming and at what resolution because I'm going to assume you want to stream at least 1080 or 720 and to do that you're going to need at least a 10 upload. As you can see I just upgraded my internet today actually so my upload is 19 so I have plenty of internet upload speed to stream at 1080p 60 fps which is what I'm going to be setting up now. So to begin the setup we're just going to come back down to the settings open that up and then we're going to start with video and audio so we already kind of set up some audio here but you can also come into this menu and add your microphone here as well as more desktop audio tracks or change your desktop uh, audio track to turn it on if it's not on for some reason but that's really it for audio you can kind of leave this the same uh, video this is pretty important your base canvas resolution is simply your monitor size i'd say for most people this is going to be 1920 by 1080 for a regular 1080p monitor if you do have like a, a 1440p monitor or a 4k monitor that will reflect here um so regardless of what you have here you want to make sure whatever resolution you're going to be streaming at is what your output or scaled resolution it is so in this case we're going to be using 1920 by 1080 but this is where you would change it to 1280 by 720 if you wanted to stream at 720p or any of these other resolutions and you can also customize it if you want to stream at 936p or something like that downscale filter is not too important in my opinion um it defaults to length so it looks like but by linear is also fine you can kind of leave this on whatever it doesn't make a big a big difference in my opinion um, when it comes to fps we do want to be using 60 fps especially if we are streaming games it's going to look so much better and it's kind of the standard nowadays so if you're streaming irl content or just just your webcam 30 fps is okay still but 
for gaming especially make sure you're on 60. once you have your video tab set up we're going to go ahead and click the output tab up here on the top left and make sure you are under the advanced output mode on the top and then we're going to be taking a look at the streaming tab so here you're going to ideally be using the invink new encoder uh, I do not recommend for most people using the X264 software encoder. The basic difference is the X264 encoder is your CPU, whereas the NVENC encoder or the hardware encoder is your graphics card or your GPU. So if you do use software encoding, it uses a lot of CPU and it will impact your overall computer and game performance when you're trying to stream and probably won't give you the best results. Invink New is a dedicated chip on your GPU that will not impact your gaming performance and it's made just for streaming. So ideally you want to use Invink New if you do have a newer Nvidia card. I believe AMD also has a similar hardware encoding setting, so I'm not sure what it's called, but that's what you want to select. Make sure you use hardware encoding, not software encoding. For this enforced streaming service encoder settings, you can leave this checked on or off. I don't find it to make that big of a difference at the end of the day. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and talk about rate control. So rate control, when you are live streaming, you need this on CBR. This is constant bit rate um, is what that stands for. So then you're gonna wanna set your bit rate, which this is where knowing your upload speed is going to come in handy because if you have a 10 or higher upload speed, you're gonna easily be able to set this at 6,000 bit rate, which is the recommended by Twitch or streaming at 1080p 60 FPS. Um, it'll also work really great on other platforms like YouTube and Facebook and whatever other platform you're streaming on. So set this to 6,000 if possible. If you are having internet issues or your internet speed isn't quite 10, maybe it's six to eight, you might wanna lower this down to 4,000 or 3,500. And you might wanna consider lowering your resolution down to 720p or even 720p 30 FPS, um, whatever your internet can handle. Keyframe interval can be left on zero. This will automatically select it for you so you never have to worry about it no matter what platform you're on. Um, preset, you wanna leave this on max quality if you do have a newer, nicer graphics card. If you are having performance issues with your stream, you can try slowly lowering it down one by one, but um, keep in mind your quality will suffer a little bit. Profile, you can leave on high. Look ahead, you wanna leave off. Psycho visual tuning, you can leave on. GPU, leave this at zero. Um, and max v, v frames, you can leave this on two. That's gonna do it for your streaming settings. It's really not too complicated as long as you know your upload speed and what resolution you're trying to stream at. Now we're gonna go over here and click the advanced tab. And I'm just gonna show you a couple other settings that can really help out your stream if you are having some technical difficulties. On the advanced tab, you just wanna scroll down until you get to the network section near the bottom. This is going to give you three different settings that can really help your stream, especially if you're having minor internet problems. It can really help smooth those out. So the first one is going to be dynamically change bitrate when dropping frames while streaming. This means you will, your stream will no longer drop or skip frames. It will simply lower your bitrate whenever your internet is having kind of hiccups. It'll just lower your bitrate and lower your quality instead of skipping the frames and freezing on stream. So if you are having skipping frame problems or dropping frame problems on your stream, this setting can really, really help. When it comes to these other two settings, new networking code and low latency mode, you can play around with these. They're not necessary, but low latency mode can help you have faster interactions with your chat and new networking code. I'm not sure exactly what it does technically, but it can help smooth out some internet issues if you are having some minor problems. That's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comment below and I'll see you guys next time.